In this video, we're going to rank and explain how each field upgrade works after round 50 and what you should use for your high rounds and void objective survival gameplay. And before we get into that, if this video helps you at all, please consider subscribing. All right, well, let's begin. In Cold War Zombies, we had a very strong RPG-esque unlock system that would allow us to become more powerful as a player. One of those areas was field upgrades. But before you could unlock all five tiers, the player would have to spend time grinding in-game to get crystals so that they could acquire all of those wonderful OP features. But in Vanguard, Vanguard Zombies, all of this has been flipped on its head. Well, sort of. Let me explain. You see, when Vanguard Zombies launched, we were only given four of the field upgrades, whereas in Cold War, we had almost double that at the end of the game's life cycle. And not only did we go backward with the number of field upgrades themselves, Treyarch completely stripped the upgrade tier system and the crystals in general. That is until the Season 1 Reloaded update occurred, and now we can upgrade the field upgrades in-game and have some features that we know and love. So how does it all work? Well, I will tell you. Instead of grinding crystals like we did in Cold War, in Vanguard Zombies, you have to acquire sacrificial hearts. To do this, you need to complete challenges inside of Duranfang. Every challenge you complete, you'll gain another heart, and you can see the hearts that you have earned in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen above your health. It takes about one heart to unlock a tier, and you'll need a total of four hearts, meaning you have to complete four challenges to unlock all of the tiers in any given game. Pretty simple. You'll have to do this every single game. It's not a permanent unlock. You have to do it every single time. And to unlock the these tiers, you'll need to head over to this book called The Tomb of Rituals and interact with it, and then you'll be able to read the description of every tier and fully unlock everything. After this, any hearts you gain can be used towards the Covenant system, which is that toilet looking thingy over there, but that's a conversation for another day. So now let's rank and explain from worst to best how each field upgrade works and what you should use to survive in the best way possible. Coming in fourth place is unfortunately Aether Shroud, and as you can see from the tiers on screen, it doesn't really do too much to help the player offensively. Tier 1 automatically reloads your weapon for you, but you don't really need this because there is so much ammo on the ground, plus the strats that you need to use inside of Vanguard Zombies are primarily shotgun based, and with the correct covenants, this can be avoided by having infinite ammo. Tier 2 deals a 500% bonus melee damage, which is a very rare and niche use case if you are using one of the melee weapons. As you can see in the footage here, my butt of the gun does barely anything to the big boy with the machine gun, and since you don't have infinite activations for this field upgrade, melee damage damage isn't really that helpful here, especially in Vanguard Zombies. Tier 3 gives you a speed boost and extends the duration of the field upgrade by 3 seconds, and this would be helpful in a larger and more traditional round-based map, but when you are in one of the smaller sub-maps, having a speed boost doesn't help too much, especially since there's no easter egg to speedrun, and you already are pretty fast with Tier 4 stamina. Tier 4 increases the charges from 1 to 2, which is fine, more is always better, but another reason why I don't like Aether Shroud is due to the fact that all the zombies run away and it breaks the flow of your game and just more so provides an inconvenience when getting the zombies under control again. Yes, you are safe for a few seconds, but the field upgrade doesn't charge fast enough for its use to be relevant in the meta of this particular mode. Where Aether Shroud shines is on objective, so if you're more of an objective player on Duranfang, being able to cloak yourself for a few moments while you're doing the purge or a transport objective, that would likely be helpful for you. But since the survival mode is only on Shinonuma, Aether Shroud doesn't play very well when going for that round 100. Coming in at third place is Frostblast. Now, I am personally a fan of this field upgrade, and I was actually hoping that this was going to be a lot more useful than it is, but it really only has one use case here, and that's to get you uncornered, and it doesn't always work the way you want it, especially if you don't have the right weapons to clear the frozen zombies that are stuck in your way. Tier 1 freezes the zombies up to 3 seconds while they're in the blast radius. Totally normal. Seems fine with me. Tier 2 increases the radius by 100%. Tier 3 increases the number of charges by 3, and Tier 4 frozen normal enemies are insta-killed when damaged. Now, there are a few reasons why I put this in the third position. The first reason is that Frost Blast only works on a flat plane. So if you are stuck inside Shinonuma or an area of Hotel Royale, you are unable to freeze the zombies above or below you, which allows them to sprint into your frozen horde. And while the regular zombies will be insta-killed once you have it fully upgraded, there are new ones coming in that may not be able to be taken out by an SMG or an assault rifle, even if it's fully packed. And this is simply because shotguns are just king right now, especially the Einhorn. And similar to Aether Shroud, Frost Blast is great for objective modes when you are getting trampled in tight corridors during transport or something like that. And yeah, on lower rounds, this field upgrade is great in a pinch when you can 
can keep three charges in the tank at any given moment. But again, for classic survival gameplay, once you get into the higher rounds, you need to use it a lot more frequently, thus not having as many chances to save yourself if you are in a pinch. And while the field upgrade is in use, it does charge itself, but it's very minute compared to some of the other field upgrades that we have when it's killing enemies. And it makes it harder to put at the number one or even the number two spot. Coming in second to last place, and to my surprise as well, was the energy mine field upgrade. Yes, you heard me correctly. I have been pleasantly surprised about the buffs to this field upgrade. It is very fun to use. Now let's go through the tiers quickly. Tier one stuns normal and special enemies for three seconds. Tier two explodes three times in a row with a 0.75 second delay between explosions. Tier three increases the number of charges by three and the blast radius for tier four is increased by 66%. Okay, so all of this sounds pretty basic, but let me explain why this is so great when using it for high rounds. If you are playing on Shinonuma and using the strategy I am, the energy mine literally hits all of the zombies above you. Not to mention it destroys the big boys with the machine gun and it recharges itself pretty heftily when it kills zombies, giving you a steady stream of energy landmines that just kill for days, as well as defend you when they get kind of stunned and shocked. And I will say that there is a bit of a skill gap with this field upgrade. And if you're not quite paying attention, you can get bound. But if you're in a good rhythm with this, it's really fun to use as it's just so powerful. And I would say that it's not great for running and gunning like in objective modes as it needs a zombie to run over to trigger that energy mine, which is why I have recommended Aether Shroud and Frost Blast for those play styles regarding objective based gameplay. Now coming in first place is, and you guessed it, the Ring of Fire. Now this thing is super, super overpowered. And before I actually figured out how to use it, I did not enjoy it at all in this game. It was really buggy at launch. And then once we got the tears, I was like, eh, I don't really feel like this is that great. But when you use it, trust me, it's amazing. But let's go through the tiers really quick before we get into why you should use it. Tier one, normal enemies take damage equal to 2% of their max HP every second. Tier two, ammo comes from stock, which means you don't have to reload. Tier three, staying in the ring of fire increases the duration from 10 seconds to 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Staying in the ring of fire for a minimum of 10 seconds will turn your damage bonus from 50% to 75%, which is over double. Yes, of course, all of these features are amazing, but as of now, I think tier one is a little broken because the zombies just die when they walk into the ring, not to mention every death charges the ring of fire while you are using it and it recharges so fast, giving you pretty much unlimited ring of fires. And with this, it's just, it's so overpowered, man. With all of the abilities, you cannot go wrong for trying to get to high rounds. And again, for objective-based gameplay, I would say that this would maybe be okay for the purge or blitz challenges, but since the challenges really require movement-based field upgrades, I still strongly recommend sticking to Aether Shroud or Frost Blast to get you out of a tight pinch. But if you want to go for high rounds on Shinonuma or future Void objectives in the next DLC pack with Season 2 and Season 3 and 4, the Ring of Fire is definitely the best choice that we have right now, and I hope they do not patch it. And if you are struggling with what the best covenants are to use with the Ring of Fire or Energy Mine, this is my recommendation. Unholy Ground to increase your damage while stationary, Brimstone to constantly kill the zombies in a close radius, and Brimstone works great with insta-kills. The zombies will just get near you and pretty much die off. Like, you don't even have to touch them. It's so cool. And then the Death Blow, which gives you infinite ammo when using shotguns by getting headshots, which returns bullets to your clip for every critical kill you get. Super overpowered, but these are the covenants and the field upgrades that you should get to get you to the high rounds that you seek on the Void objective. All right, everybody. Well, that's going to do it for this video. If it helped you at all, please consider leaving a sub or a like. And if you don't like the video, well, that other button works too. Hope you all have a great day and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.